What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Lesser Athletes. My name is Chad One. Today, like always, not interesting video for you here on the channel. Today is one question for every team entering the season for the West. We're going to go from the best record from last season to the worst record from last season. So, Thunder to the Blazers, um, both being in the same division, funny enough. Um, it's basically just a question where it's like, it's kind of hard. Can you really answer it? Kind of a question that kind of just brought up a lot when it comes to your team. That's really just it. It's not really too big of a deal. Um, I just voice cracked so bad right there. I want to cry that I had this in live, um, I guess not live, uh, recorded style. Anyways, let's just get started with the Oklahoma City Thunder. In a different spot this year, I think. Um, I feel like they helped a lot in their defensive style ball. So one question for Oklahoma City Thunder. Can this team really compete? When you really look at this team, when I say really compete, I mean go to the Western Conference Finals, go to the Finals at all? Or are we going to see another team that just goes to round two and maybe loses there? Can this team be the real competitive team that we look at? I think right now it's most likely yes than no, but for now, can this team be really the competitive team that we're looking for? Kind of an answer that I think, again, this video is probably a question that's hard to answer for a lot of teams rather than not. At number two, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves. Kind of should change this one because I made this video before the cat trade. So I could potentially trade this one. Can they replicate last season? I mean, it's not, I could go more of a like cat centric, you know, Julius Randle centric question, but can they re replicate what happened last season? You know, going number two, going to the Western Conference Finals. I think this question's a little bit harder now without a cat, in my opinion. You could say that, you know, we can still do good, but do you go to the Western Conference Finals without a cat, go bear, whatever? Maybe. Maybe it's different because you were playing cat at times, not that much compared to, you know, a Nas Reed, a, you know, go bear. You get Julius Randle now. You get Dante DiVincenzo even on the bench. So, is this a little hard to answer? I think so. At number three, you have the Denver Nuggets. Can people step up is the biggest question I think the Nuggets have by far. When you think about the Nuggets since their championship year, Bruce Brown stepped up, did well, left the next, no, not next season. Yes, next season. Um, KCP this season was somebody that was needed in that championship run, left now. So when you're really looking at their team, there's a lot of kind of rookie sash players that kind of need to step up for them to really hit. For example, Christian Brown. I think that's a huge person that needs to step up. Can he though? Julian Strather. I think that's another person that can step up. There's a lot of players that I think probably need to look a little bit better at this team. And for now, I don't know if I can 100% say, um, people can step up. And if you also see me kind of messing with my mouth a little bit, I have a cut in my lip and it hurts so bad when I talk. So it's crazy I'm even recording this video. At number four, we have the Los Angeles Clippers. Without PG, can you really contend? I tend to notice that this, you know, Clippers team, I find them in this weird area where I don't know if they are a playoff team in the top six, I want to say, not playing, or if they're a fringe playing team. To me, truthfully, this Clippers team does not look good. I don't think this is a good Clippers team. You really have Kawhi Harden and then some role players in a Zubak, in a Terrence Mann. Other than that, these players are not better than I think you really just look at. Truthfully, I think the Los Angeles Clippers are an interesting team that I don't think can really contend without a PG. I think the Clippers kind of window to really succeed and go to the finals is probably at an end rather than a help in a kind of rather than a uh rather than still going in my opinion at number five we have the dallas mavericks do the new additions uh help you or did you just make the same kind of team i think that's a big thing that i've seen a lot of people think when it comes to the dallas mavericks for example when you look at their team this team is very similar to last season when you look at you know um, Derek Jim Jr. being there, kind of replacing him with uh, Najee Marshall. Looking at, um, why am I blanking? Why am I blanking on who they lost? Josh Green having that forward. Clay Thompson changes with the three point in that sense. But is this going to elevate your team, or is there still going to be some hurt kind of 
things that goes around with this team. I would probably say a full year with PJ, with Daniel Gafford, with Clay now. I think it's better than not. But at the same time, are you going to go to the finals again? Maybe win it? I think, are you? Because let's be honest here. Did we all expect the Dallas Mavericks to go to the finals? No. So I want to see, do they go to the finals? Or is it something like Western Conference or something like that? At number six, we have the Phoenix Suns. Will this team break the top five? I think that's the biggest things for the Suns that I don't think I can say confidently that this team is a for sure top six team, top five team. Maybe that's me just being a little disrespectful a little bit. But, you know, they did deal with injuries last season. Maybe that's a huge factor for them. I feel like this Suns team, truthfully, isn't as good as what a lot of people think. I think this team is a little bit more fraudulent than not. I think that the Phoenix Suns makes a lot more sense to be a team that kind of gets, I don't know, kind of gets pushed away sooner rather than later where this team is like eight, somewhere around there because of the team just not working out. And we see his Suns potentially try and get a little bit younger. At number seven, we have the Los Angeles Lakers. Can they get out of the play The Lakers have had this issue of being in the play these past two years. Is this the year we finally see them get out of there? Truthfully, I don't know. I don't know if this is the year that I really see them kind of getting out of the play-in. For right now, I'm going to say no, um, but it's a really hard question. I don't think a lot of Lakers fans can answer. At number eight, we have the New Orleans Pelicans. Who will really be on this team midseason? I have to say this because this Pelicans team in this the offseason for the Pelicans have been interesting. I think we all entered this offseason maybe thinking more like January-ish actually. Um, thinking that, you know what, this Pelicans team does not look good. This Pelicans team could trade Zion this offseason. This Pelicans team could trade Brandon Ingram this offseason. Whatever it might be, something like that could happen. And I think that this team is going to probably go under some potential, you know, changes, which... DeJounte made a team, maybe it's making it better, but I still don't know how you feel about Brandon Ingram wanting money. I still don't know how you feel about Zion Williamson for the future. So when you look at this team midway through a season, are we going to see Brandon Ingram gone for somebody? Are we going to see somebody else gone for somebody? For now, I'd rather say that I think this team's going to stay similar, but I think it's, you don't really know. I mean, look at their center play. Someone's probably going to be traded for a center. At number nine, the Sacramento Kings. Can DeMar really make this team better? I think this team was very good last season, but I think they had some uh, ideas and thought processes and just, you know, really just thinking what's going to happen for a team that's and kind of making them just... The, the team didn't succeed what they really wanted to. It was a good team. The West was hard, but it didn't succeed into the playoffs, whatever. Can DeMar really be that much of a factor to get you to the playoffs? Right now, it's up in the air. I mean, truthfully, when you look at this team, it's not like they got 100% better. Yes, replacing like a Harrison Barnes for DeMar and really just replacing some key people for DeMar makes a lot of sense. But it's not 100% nice. It's not like a all looking good in my opinion i think it's a little more than likely not amazing and number 10 we have the golden state warriors can this team realistically make the playoffs i think that's the biggest thing for the warriors any warriors fan will probably agree with you if you were going to the offseason thinking that you're going to get all these players and you really just lost people and got some role players can you as a warriors fan that was the 10 seed last season say well our team got better I don't think so. I don't think you can say that. You're just going to have to bank on young guys growing up, young guys doing better. And if that happens, then maybe. But you have to think the people below you, like the Grizzlies, like the Rockets, like the Spurs, are getting just continually, continually, that's not the word, continuously, continuously better. Why did I say continually? That w- That was crazy. Did I just make up a word? I don't think the Warriors, though, is a team that could – do that you kind of are hoping that the Clippers fall off so the Warriors barely make it at here at number 11 Houston Rockets can they make the jump I think 
the hardest thing when I'm making videos for the Rockets is thinking, is this team a playoff or play-in team? For me, and honestly, just my thoughts, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, looking at this team, are they really going to jump? I mean, what do they have to the offseason? Reed Shepard? Does that tremendously help your team? Granted, Amen Thompson's going to have more minutes. Granted, Jalen Green's going to have more time on his belt. Sangoon, kind of they know their identity now. Another year with Ime Adoka kind of really growing this team. Feel good with the Houston Rockets, but will they make the jump? That's the huge question that I don't know. I can 100% say yes or no to. At number 12, we have the Utah Jazz. Will they pull the plug on Loria or others? I think the Utah Jazz are in this interesting situation for years now where they have a good enough team to kind of rebuild and they have good talent, but they also at the same time have these great players that are not letting them be the last seed of the conference. Keontae George is a perfect example of someone they kind of got lucky on at number 16. Did you think that they would 100% get number 16 and get a Keontae George? No. And if they didn't, I mean, you're looking at really they only had Taylor Hendricks from that draft. So the Utah Jazz are an interesting place that I think should pull the plug on some of these players to fully commit to the rebuild because you see these teams try and do both at the same time and it just doesn't help. You need to get players that are going to develop with you while you rebuild like a scotty barnes for example for the raptors at number 13 for the memphis grizzlies will coming back from injury take time i see a lot of people espn for example project like 52 wins for the grizzlies i think i had something similar in my predictions for them but the fact of the matter is is that the memphis grizzlies you have to think they're all coming back from injury these are players that are, were injured they come back, they're going to have to do reps with a new team, reps these new players that had a bigger role when they were gone. Whatever it might be, Memphis Grizzlies, truthfully, might not look as good. It might not be as good as a team that we might hope and might think. I think that the Memphis Grizzlies just are going to take some time with this kind of injury, and it's just going to be a little bit before we really see the Memphis Grizzlies get their full potential. At number 14, San Antonio Spurs. Does Chris Paul make this team a lottery team still or a playing team? I think that's the biggest thing for the Spurs, that I think the Spurs don't want to be a playing team. I think they do want to tank one more year. I think that's the biggest thing for them. Granted, if they start winning, maybe they make some trades, move some players around, whatever, but for now... Does Chris Paul make this team a good team or does this team make them a lottery team? I don't think for sure I can say what it is because I could see him going 10 to the play in. I could see them falling from 11 to 13 in my opinion. It's a hard West. It's a hard West. That's just it at the end of the day. San Antonio Spurs is probably that team that's going to be just right in the middle. I don't know which one they're going to hit. At number 15 on the Portland Trailblazers. Kind of interesting for the Trailblazers, but can Scoo Henderson take the leap? I think that's really the main thing for the Blazers this season is kind of like making sure Scoot jumps up. I'm trying to think of another thing. Can Anthony Simons be off the team? Something like that. To me right now, for the Portland Trailblazers, the main thing is really Scoo Henderson, can he jump up and can he be that guy for them? Took, you, took him third overall in the draft. So Scoo Henderson should be good. It should be someone that does take that leap but do we 100 percent see it does it take some time i don't know truthfully i think as of right now it looks like it could take some time which is going to be an interesting factor for the blazers but then again my 100 percent workout for them other than that i hope you guys enjoy it let me know what you think down in the comments below i will see you in the next one goodbye